I'm Guy Benson. We're back on The Guy Benson Show in New York. And with us here in studio, the one and only Jesse Waters, co-host of the five host of Jesse Waters Prime Time, all over the news channel. Of course, author, best-selling author of How I Saved the World. Great to see you. You too. So we were just talking in the break about March Madness because yeah. I'm here in my purple pullover for the cats and all that. And I asked you if you'd seen this clip. We played it earlier. I can't resist playing it again. This team had just lost by almost 30 points. And they're trying to console themselves and realize the season's over. Some of their careers are now over. And into the locker room comes a prominent alum, the vice president of the United States, to maybe pick up their spirits just a little bit. And here's what she had for them. Cut 15. We played hard. We played to the very last second. You made all us bison so, so proud. You showed the world who bison are. You know, I was at Howard back in the day where we were just happy that there was a game. <laughs> Much less getting to this place, right? And I see bison literally all over the world. And we've been talking about you, this team. You make us so proud. So I know you may not be feeling great right now, okay? But know who you are. You are excellence. So these are college uh, students, not seven-year-olds. Yeah. Um, how inspirational would that be for you as an athlete after a loss like that? On a scale of a Gene Hackman and Hoosiers? <laughs> pretty bad. So you just got blown out by 30, and now you're a meme. You're sitting in there, and you've got your hands on your knees, and Kamala is... <laughs> it's sad. It's a PR stunt, and it's the last thing you want to hear from the vice president who's never played sports. We tried to look into it. She's never played sports. I did see her play basketball once. I think she bricked like seven shots in a row. And it's just hard every time. Do you remember when she talked to the children about space? Oh, how could I forget? And they were about seven years old. Yep. They were child actors. She talks to child actors the same way she talks to grown men who just got blown out by 30. And also actual astronauts. She she gave a speech saluting real astronauts, and it was the exact same tone and cadence as the children. Do you think that those players refer to themselves as bison? Probably not. I don't know. I mean, wh where did you go again? Northwestern? Yes. What's your mascot? Wildcats. Okay. Do you say... Wildcats! Hey, Wildcat! We're Same. a Wildcat! No. No, we're the cats. You're the Okay. But when you're 18, are no. you a cat? You're a baller. You're, you're not a bison, probably. You're not a bison. Is and, the single and plural of bison bison? Yeah. It's it like, is. Okay. It's like fish. Got it. Okay. Thank you. What about now? You're a, a bantam? Bantam. That's correct. Which yes. is a little fighting... Cock. Technically accurate, right? It's like not my words, but it's following the science. That's that is that is the science because we've talked about this before. You went to Trinity College. My parents did as well, so I owe my existence to Trinity College. Has I actually don't know the answer to this. Is Trinity eligible ever to go to the NCAA tournament? Or are they like D two or we're D three? Okay, so thanks no. Thanks for rubbing that in. Well, no. So do you have a team? Do you have a college team that you would generally root for? Look at this guy. Do you have a team? Do you even have a team? Well. <laughs> You obviously root for Trinity, but if they are not eligible as a D3 team, like, do you have, since you're from the Philly area, do you, like, root for Villanova or something? I'll, I'll do Villanova, I'll do Temple, but when I was growing up on ESPN, the big games were Duke, North Carolina. Sure. And that's when they had uh, Rasheed Wallace, Stackhouse, so I was always a Tar Heel guy. And then I was also a UNLV guy. Remember the Running Rebels? Running Rebels. Arcanian. Yeah, he had a bunch of thugs. They had, they had some issues, I think. They had some issues on that team. Larry Johnson. They were a great team. Future Nick, I believe. Future Nick. I mean, he hit that, was it the four-point play? The four-point play, back when I actually followed the NBA. Yeah. Right. I don't follow it anymore. We were just talking about the Sacramento Kings. We don't even know if they still exist as a franchise. They do. Cause they the, do? Because the Cats game this weekend was, it's at their arena, and they have a tradition, I guess, in the new arena. When the Kings win, they shoot this, like, beam of purple light into the sky, which is great because we're purple. So we were joking that the beam was for us. You identified as the Kings. That's exactly right. <laughs> um, let's talk about today being St. Patrick's Day. You're not, you're a little bit Irish, you were telling me. Yeah. Do you get into this holiday? Like, are you going to go and have a bunch of beer later, or is it just sort of... No. I got into it when I was about 20. That sounds right. And now I'm <laughs> about 44. So we sent Johnny out to the streets. 
to interview a bunch of drunk Irish. Uh, that is hazard pay worthy. Well, he should pay me. He probably got some phone numbers. <laughs> and that's the only way he's getting phone numbers if the girls are drunk. So it's I had to actually wade through a crowd to get to do this interview because it's so ridiculous outside in Times Square. I yeah. smell like Guinness. Someone threw beads on me. It's like so. The, it's not you haven't been drinking. You're telling I us. I haven't it's, been drinking. It's secondhand Guinness. <laughs> That's right. Okay, but it's it's bonkers outside. It's just a bunch of white girls wearing green, uh -huh. and then it's also sixty five year old white guys wearing green, and they're both just as drunk. Well, I mean, I think the sixty five year old guys are saying like, "This is our big chance." <laughs> They wait all year right. for St. Patty's Day. And it's, it's like socially acceptable right. to not have a costume on necessarily, but to be belligerently drunk by noon. Right. And to talk to fellow drunk people who might be young co eds, for Just example. Just a little revelry. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it's hot outside in New York. So that makes it a lot more dangerous. Clothes come off. Uh -oh. There's more people on the street, more yeah. street drinking, more street fighting, which I hope Johnny filmed. Would that air tonight? That'll air on Monday. On Monday, okay. I just want to make sure that the, the people get what they want. And I'm still hoping that we can get to the bottom of the uh, the primetime investigation to whether or not Kamala Harris ever played sports. I know you guys are, you said you're on that. We've assigned a producer to look into Very it. good, that's important. Now, I also, speaking of co-eds, I get the sense, just knowing you a little bit, that you were probably, in your day, the king of spring break. Is that accurate? Were you like a spring break king? Maybe Prince. Just a prince? I'm not going to go there and call myself a king and self-anoint. Okay. But would I be wrong to perhaps many – how about – let's put it this way. Many people are saying, <laughs> right, that you were a spring break king. But – and spring break is now – I just flew in this morning uh, to Newark, and there were a lot of guys and gals getting ready to go to Mexico and Fort Lauderdale and all that. But you've been talking about spring break and, and Mexico on your show a fair amount. I mean, it's a little – dicey down there right now like on a serious note uh, one of our producers why it was gonna go to mexico he ended up axing the trip at the last minute just because it's it's not good in terms of the danger and then also just the the president of mexico saying what he said blaming america attacking republicans it's just kind of a weird time right now i'm glad your producer listened to the prime time travel advisory mm -hmm. uh, because if he didn't he'd be dead <laughs> oh and God. then you'd be down a producer but it is serious, and we talked to a guy who actually got kidnapped by a cartel, Sinaloa, and he said the most dangerous time is when you land in the airport, the drive to the hotel is where they get you. So you have to make sure when you get in that car, when you're going to the Hyatt, that that car says Hyatt, and that driver has a little hat that says Hyatt, because if you take another car, that's when is you get certain kidnapped. certain parts of Mexico, or is it like kind of across the board? Well, the State Department's issued travel advisories for, I think, 32 out of the 35 Mexican provinces. Wow. But Cancun literally is in, I believe it's Gulf Cartel territory. They're all surrounded by cartel territory. It's just a matter of when you leave the resort property, then you put your life in danger. Do so you want to stay? You stay on the property, and if you have to do cocaine, you get it on the property. If you have to. Don't buy cocaine off-site. Is that your bottom line? Is that, that's that, not mine. That's your. Uh, that's what people that's are saying. That's your spring break advice from Jesse Waters. <laughs> people are saying this. D many people are saying don't buy your cocaine <laughs> offsite. Oh my god! What do you guys have on tap tonight? I know the the five is coming up in half an hour, so you're kind to do this, and you got of course prime time on a big Friday. What's in store for the for the folks? So we have a whistleblower from Coca Cola, who for the first time is going to go public and say that they're just splashing so much sugar and chemical into this can and just forcing it down the throats of our children, that that's the business strategy. I mean, yes. And they're bribing Is all it, of these that's school the, districts. That's the product. Right. It's sugar in a can. Sugar in a can. Now, you know that. I know that. Well, I drink Coke Zero, personally. Do you? Yes. Okay. For my so, figure. For your, yeah. And you have quite a svelte figure. You'd look <laughs> great in Cancun before they kidnapped you and slit your throat. Very, very pasty. But they've also bribed the American Academy of Pediatrics, you know, American Academy of Diabetes to say that, hey, you know what, Coke's not that bad when it is. Coca-Cola, we have to clarify really <laughs> based on our previous part of the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Don't buy your Coca-Cola offsite. <laughs> That's what you meant. Right. That's interesting. And yeah. so did this person just like 
we don't need to reveal is is this a person who will be named and shown or is this like a secret uh, anonymous whistleblower we might have to spot shadow them okay i mean they may be from pepsi what the hell do big, i know big soda <laughs> might come after them big soda uh, yeah they might get hillary did they, clinton did they come to you yes when people want to blow the whistle they come to prime time straight to waters that's right they're like we need we need some serious journalism to blow the lid off of this story <laughs> get waters on the horn exactly right we also have Joe Biden's luck's running out. This, I mean, more of this stuff. These wires, these bank records. First, they said he never did any business in China. Hunter just admitted he took a million from the Chinese. Yeah, what's a million here what's or there? A million. Like, I like this countersuit by him too. He's suing like the laptop repair guy. Right. Suing him, but also not admitting that it's his laptop at the same time. It's like it's not what? my laptop, but you violated my privacy <laughs> right. by by giving it to someone else. <laughs> right. That's some galaxy brain stuff. Right. I don't think that's going anywhere, and that's just a scare tactic. But Biden's been lucky for a while. You know, Barack made him VP. COVID kicked Trump out of office. And Minnie Madoff bought the Senate in the midterms. But now, I think his luck's running out on St. Patrick's Day. The Five coming up in half an hour on the News Channel. Primetime tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern. Jesse, great to see you. Thanks, guys. We'll be right back.